I have known Tim since he was a postdoc here at UNCG. He was a postdoc in the psychology department. I was on the search committee that interviewed him for assistant professor of psychology. So it's been ever since Tim was on campus that I've known him. I've known Tim for a good long while. Uh, when I was a department head, uh, he was an associate dean, and, and I think maybe I thought, who the heck is this person who's this associate dean and keeping me from uh, meeting with the dean? Tim was the first person I met when I came to my job interview at UNCG. And uh, I remember walking across the lobby of the O'Henry to shake his hand. And I found myself, instead of looking at his face, looking at his tie, which was Edward Gorey. And I said to myself, this is going to be just fine. Well, who is Tim Johnston? That's a complex question. He's uh, someone who shows up for work every day. He's uh, conscientious. He's uh, incredibly knowledgeable. He cares about people, and he cares about the institution. Uh, he's uh, a leader without uh, uh, forcing uh, the idea that he is a leader. Always incredibly organized and proper in everything he does and has kind of a unique sense of, of humor. Um, I, I'm also always struck by his, despite kind of his dry demeanor, his affection that he has for the college, for all of the departments and programs. When I was first here, we had in Administrative Council, the collection of department heads for the college, a set of roundtable discussions at our annual retreat. And he came over and sat down at one of the tables on teaching uh, interdisciplinary material. And of course, he didn't have to sit down at any table if he didn't want to, but that was the one that he came and chose. So I think that as much as he was pressed by big things like the budget um, or the changes in policy or all of the managerial things that a college dean has to do, uh, Tim has always tried to stay in touch with the classroom, with the teachers, and even with the students. He's um, always been a caring and compassionate person and has bent over backwards and many times to help whomever is needing the help at any given time. I think the British phrase that sums up Tim's leadership in the college, keep calm and carry on. There have been so many challenges, especially over the last few years with the budget. And Tim has always approached these challenges in a very analytical fashion. He's put a lot of trust in the judgment of the department heads. Rather than making a kind of unilateral decision from his perspective about where departments need to take cuts, the guy is completely unflappable. Other things that would send people over the edge, oh my gosh, he sits there and the, the most animated he gets is to say, well, I think I'm rather annoyed. I would be screaming and jumping off of a bridge when he's talking about the budget cuts that he had to take and all the different things. And yet he just, he is so even keel and he is so unflappable and that just seems very traditional British. My vocabulary has really expanded in a lot of ways. Um, in writing and proofing things for him, one of the words that I've picked up is shall. He will often say, I shall do this or you shall do that. Um, and that's one of the unique things about Tim. Um, he also has a, a quirky sense of humor. We often try and play jokes on him. And the funny thing about Tim is that what isn't funny is what makes him laugh. British. I didn't know Tim was British. Boy, you work with someone for 13 years and I guess there are a lot of things that you don't notice. But come to think of it, you know, he does use uh, certain British turns of phrase with uh, some frequency, like stiff upper lip, you know, get on with it, old man. And uh, every once in a while you pass by his office and you hear a pip pip cheerio coming from it. So, uh, you know, maybe those are signs of uh, him being British. Yeah, sure, you betcha. 
I will tell you, I would describe him as a British beer snob, and I'll, I'll tell you one of his favorite jokes to make that point. He told this to me some time ago. Uh, I think, in fact, we were sitting at uh, Natty Green's at the time, so it was appropriate. Uh, four guys walk into a bar. One's a representative from Budweiser, one's a rep from Miller, one's a rep from Corona, and the last is a rep from Guinness. And so they're at the bar, the bartender asks the first guy, he says, what do you have? Well, he's the Bud rep. So of course he says, I'll have a Budweiser. He asks the next guy, what do you have? I'll have a Miller. He asks the next guy, what do you have? The Corona rep says, I'll have a Corona. So finally the uh, bartender turns to the rep from Guinness, says, all right, what can I get for you? He pauses and he says, I'll have a Coke. The bartender's surprised, said, you're not gonna have a beer? And he says, why should I? Nobody else is. Now, if you don't think that's funny, you are not a British beer snob and don't get it. I think his, his greatest contribution is his deep commitment to learning and to the liberal arts and sciences and being able to convey that message to others. He's a very eloquent speaker. When Tim gets up to speak in front of a group, he can convey complex things beautifully and in a convincing way uh, that makes you assured of his understanding and his enthusiasm for what we do in the College of Arts and Sciences and at the university. Um, he doesn't let his emotions uh, rule his decisions. Uh, Tim has been very logical. He's, uh, uh, you know, he considers everything before he makes a decision. And he, Tim explains his decisions very well to all the parties concerned. So he's a very open person that way. His greatest contribution was to hiring the faculty we have in the college. Because we've continued to maintain in the college, I believe, that balance between teaching and research that has been lost at a lot of schools where the research mission takes precedence over teaching. One of the things I like about him is that if I'm just having an issue or a problem, I can come and have a talk with him. It's funny because he never knows what I'm gonna say when I walk into the office with him. But I try to start with a hug and end with a hug and get a giggle in there some way because it's gotta be a rough job where everything you do is just putting out fires and managing fires. And by the way, he actually put out a real fire in front of the college one day. Last spring, um, when we were sitting in the dean's office, the fire alarm went off, which often happens on campus. Um, but this time, it really was a fire. And so as we were all congregating out in the parking lot, Tim Johnston and our associate dean, Tom Quapel, were standing there. And we started talking about, well, where are the fire extinguishers? So the two of them went in, came out each with arm with a fire extinguisher, and extinguished the fire before the firemen came. So that was really kind of a fun and memorable moment. And we've often joked about the number of fires he has to put out as dean. But he also put out some real fires for the campus, which was really something I think that a lot of us look back on. David Cameron, the Prime Minister of England, uh, introduced a bill into Parliament uh, outlining four qualities that he wants to see instilled in school children in England. And I think Tim could have served as the model for those character building modules. Those modules are... Uh, <laughs> this is a... Uh, this is a Rick Perry moment. I can't remember the modules. <laughs> the foreign order here. Yeah, yeah, I know you can edit this. Our modules are resiliency, curiosity, honesty, and service. You know, when I think of Tim, I think of those four qualities. You can't be a dean nowadays without being resilient. Uh, uh, he's a naturally curious individual. You have been just the ultimate leader and have made my work life and career in the college the best that I could ever hope for. I, I, I wish you well in your transition back to psychology, but I gotta tell you, every Wednesday morning, I will 
find uh, that uh, I am lost when I turn to my right and you're not sitting there. But relax, enjoy, you're gonna have fun in the classroom, and if you ever need any help, just come on over. We can laugh and giggle together. I'm gonna miss you as my dean, but I'm glad I got to know you as my dean, as a colleague, and as a friend. Tim, I want to thank you personally for all of your service to the college and the university and all of the support that you've given me. You are a gentleman and a scholar and the one person I know I can count on if we have to put out a fire. So appreciate what it is that you have done for the college and the university and personally it was just tremendous to be able to work with you for so long. I loved working with you, and I appreciate your compassion, and I appreciate your friendship. I hope you'll have some great times up on the farm. I hope you'll get back deep into your research uh, and have a, a very enjoyable scholarly life here at the university, and then after that. So good luck, Tim. We wish you well. Test one, two. Are you reading my signal down there in the College of Arts and Sciences? Over. Uh, this is Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. We've got a problem. Are you reading me? I repeat, problem in Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Uh, we are hearing that Tim Johnson is going into retirement. Not sure what we're going to do. Repeat, we're feeling a little discombobulated. Over. In all seriousness, I wish you a sincere and gracious retirement and have a lot of fun and let's drink a glass of beer or a cup of tea together. Over and out.